Hey everyone, welcome back to Ontario Gardening. It is Christmas Eve Eve. I have most of my makeup off. I'm in my pajamas. I'm almost ready for bed. But today I had my family Christmas dinner. Um, for those of you who don't know, I work in healthcare outside of the home. So it is my Christmas to work. Look at me, I look like a raccoon. Excellent. Anyways, I work outside of the home. It's my Christmas to work. So we had our big family dinner today. And I just kind of wanted to do a quick vlog while I'm busy kind of puttering and preserving around the kitchen to chat about what it is that a homesteader kind of thinks about or looks at when they are doing big events like this. So I'm gonna turn you around into my kitchen to kind of show you exactly what's going on in there and kind of get the ball rolling. If you're new to like preserving food, um, obviously the first things first, we're gonna be in the kitchen cooking all day and cooking from scratch if we can. And then the mindset of like taking those leftovers if you're not gonna eat them and instead of just freezing them, getting creating with getting creative with them and trying to make something out of nothing. So let's turn you around and I let me just show you some quick ideas and then I will let you enjoy your family dinner. So like I said, when you're getting into like homesteading and trying to be self-sustainable, you're looking to use things like your scraps and just kind of trying to think ahead of how you're going to use things that maybe are coming close to expiring or you have an abundance of, maybe you were gifted them if you're lucky enough. So, you know, thinking of like, oh, I have some extra milk from the cow or the goat today. So it, you know, it's going to go bad. Or even from the grocery store, if you're starting like I am in the suburbs where you don't have access to those things and you're still buying milk from the grocery store, you're like, oh, my milk's about to expire because we haven't drank it. What can I do to preserve it? Freeze it. Maybe I make a big batch of, you know, um, baked potato soup and I freeze that up or can that up. So just kind of like having those thoughts in the back of your head. And like a lot of things you're not going to get from um, just making them up on a whim. You've got like, I've got a ton of different books I've been reading forever. Um, your YouTube videos, just like you're doing now. So many different resources where you're going to want to um, just kind of take in all that information and keep those ideas, write them down in the back of your head for future use. So for example, Christmas dinner, we're done. I've got leftovers. Chances are they will get eaten. But if they don't, I have things on standby. So for example, I've got all the white meat picked off the bird and ready to eat. Dark meat isn't really eaten in my house. So what I do is I save it. And I have a video of this um, prior to. I will link it down below. And I make turkey jerky. So this is sitting in a marinade and it's going to sit here for about 24 hours. I'm going to throw it on the dehydrator and we're going to make turkey jerky. And the brown meat is really good for that. It's nice. And you can use white meat too, of course, if you have an abundance. But brown meat is amazing for it because it has that extra flavor. So I have that sitting and marinating in the fridge, ready to go. We have our stuffing. It's probably going to get mostly eaten, but after about a day, if it's not, this will make perfect croutons. So you can do these. And again, you don't need a dehydrator. You can do this in the oven if you're just starting out. I do have a really cheap dehydrator. I just got it off of Amazon. I believe at the time it was $45, but you're looking like three, four years ago. So it's probably up to, I would say like 60, 70 now, but it's amazing. It has done me solid all throughout everything I've done so far. But anyways, you could throw these onto the dehydrator and make croutons out of leftover. And these would have like absolute, you can use your dressing if you're American, they, you know, you have your dressing and your stuffing, two different things, but you can throw these in your dehydrator. That's going to have amazing flavor because it's got the butter, all of your turkey juices, your spices and herbs. Amazing. Um, right now I have some potatoes that are just about to be turned on. I haven't turned them on yet just because I wanted you to be able to hear me, but I had some leftover potatoes that I know I'm probably not going to use in the next few days. Cause like I said, I'm going to work. So I have um, made them into, um, scallop potatoes. So I'm going to dehydrate these for the next few hours. I chopped them up with my mandolin and making scallops, dehydrating those to preserve those. And then this is a super simple one. I have a video for this as well, which I will also link down below. I've got the carcass in here with my scrap 
uh, all my scraps from today when making the stuffing and whatnot and the water and uh, I'm making some stock and you can pressure can or freeze this if you don't have a pressure canner. There is like water bath options. It's not like guaranteed to be safe. So I'm not going to tell you to do that here. But, you know, if you're one of the people that will do rebellious canning, that's all you. So, yeah, join a Facebook group. That's actually one of the ideas. So I originally got like the scallop potato idea from a Facebook group. I had never even thought of that. And then it's like, oh, that's a great idea. How can I do it like safely? And I went to my dehydrator Bible. I've got a book down there. It tells you how to do it properly and it's all good. So I can do a video on that later on. Um, it's just one of those things I haven't had the time to do it. And we're just experimenting with different slices and stuff like that right now. But yeah, so um, this is also super, super easy. You're saving the carcass. You're throwing it in with water and some scraps and some herbs. You're letting that simmer on the on the stove for like six to eight hours and boom, you're done. So just, just an idea of what goes on after the cooking has stopped and everyone has gone home. So again, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We hope you guys have an abundance of laughter and love at your table and abundance of leftovers to preserve and make some good stuff with. We'll talk to you later. Bye.